Today, we're going to be digging into the new WordPress AI Telex feature. Now, this is only available on WordPress.com. Kind of have self-hosted. This is an experimental tool. So this is not something you're going to want to use or even be able to use on a live WordPress website. You are going to need to have a WordPress.com account, but you don't need to have a paid one. I've only got a free account, so you can do exactly the same as me. If you want to follow along, just click on the link in the description down below and open up your own test environment. So once you've logged in or created a new WordPress.com account, you'll have access to Telex, the AI feature. And as you can see, it tells us right at the top, this is experimental. So don't expect too much from it. Set your expectations where you would expect them to be. So what you have then is you tell it what you want to do. In other words, your typical kind of AI prompt. Now remember, this is specific to trying to create WordPress native blocks. Let's take a quick look at what we can do here. Now, before we do, I've tested this super briefly, and there's this little sort of icon that allows us to potentially upload files. But what I found is, if you select it, you can't actually access any file types. So I'm not really sure if this is just not available right now, or something that will become available in the future, or it just isn't working right. My assumption would be that you could use that feature when it's available, and if it's not available, just take it off the blinking interface to be able to say, prompt it what you want and use this as a kind of like, this is the type of thing I'm looking to create and help the AI potentially give you a better result. If you've used anything like Lovable or Bolt or ChatGPT, any of those tools, you can upload source images to help it get you closer to what you want. So hopefully that is something that will be added relatively soon because I think that is going to make this a little bit more usable. Let's start with something super simple. Let's ask it to create something like a pricing block, something that isn't too complicated. Let's keep it super simple, ask it to create a kind of three column layout, a pricing plan with a center one being highlighted. What you can also then do is improve that prompt using AI. So AI inception, using AI to improve your AI prompt, ironic. So let's click on that and see what it does to our basic prompt. It's updated a little bit to give it a bit more information, a bit more descriptive and so on. You could obviously take your time to do this yourself, but I want to see how it'll perform. Now let's go and build my block. This will then take you into the main area, which shows you your prompt, tells you what the AI is going to do, and then comes down to this little window that kind of goes through and kind of flashes past all the things it's doing, the files it's creating, the number of lines of code and so on. So let's let this run and see what happens once it's completed. So after about two minutes, this is what we end up with. You can see we've got our pricing table here. It doesn't look particularly good, but we can come in and select this, adjust the actual size of it. So let's say we want this to be wide width, so it looks a little nicer. So we can adjust that. You'll also notice now that what we have on the right-hand side are some additional options on how we can edit the look and appearance of everything to do with this particular block. And that's the thing to remember here is that this has created a new block for us. So this is an editable block which could be reused anywhere on our entire site. We can customize this and you can see the options we currently have. So then we can choose which is our highlight plan. So you can see we can select whichever one we want to sort of focus on. We've got our colors and everything then inside here as well. So we can change for the basic, for the pro or the enterprise. So we can change the background color. So let's say we want to change the background color of this one to this yellow color. You can change that. You can change your text color. So we've got an editable block now that we can reuse where we want. We can download this and we can utilize this in an actual WordPress website. I found when you download this and try to install this, it isn't always perfect. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. And speaking of not always working, let's save this. Sometimes you'll switch this to the front end and take a look. And as you can see, nothing is showing up. So that block is showing absolutely nothing. But let's say we want to open this up and add in additional columns. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so let's ask it to add the ability to be able to increase or decrease the number of columns and also to have a maximum of five columns and retain the ability to change the colors and so on. So again, let's go and ask it to make these changes. There we go. After what seems like an eternity, probably about five minutes, it's come back with this. So let's take again, let's take a look. Let's open this up. We can't because it seems to have crashed. Okay, so it is experimental and as you can see, after a refresh, because this page crashed, now we have absolutely nothing in the preview area. 
Okay, cool. After that failed attempt, let's take a look at what I prepared earlier, which is true Blue Peter fashion. That's just showing my age. This image slider. So expand this out. There's our image slider. And as you can see over on the right hand side, we have some options. The interface looks a little bit messed up here, but what we can do is we can select images that we want to use for our slider. We could also apply alt text, a text overlay, and we can reposition these if we want to as well. So that's quite nice. I didn't ask it to do that, but that's basically all we have here. And it still looks a little messed up inside the editor. You can see we've got this kind of gradient overlay that doesn't stretch the full width with our navigation. Our image sits underneath it. We've also got our text up in the top area, which you can't really see. So if we save this and preview it, see this is what we get. As you can see, that doesn't go full width. We can go through and we do get a slight transition between them. But it's very, very basic at its very starting point. Now, obviously, you can actually ask it to do more here. So let's say we want to add in the option to be able to set the height and we want to use specific values, pixels, VH and M's. Again, let's ask it to go and do that. Let's wait another five minutes probably and see if that crashes the browser again. So we'll give it a try and see what we come back with. So let's select our image slider. There's our original options. Cool, we now have a slider size so we can adjust this. I've set this so we can use multiple units. Let's say VH and we'll say 80 VH. I previously asked it to drop in the Pexels API to add in some functionality there, but that didn't really work out the way I expected. So I've left that, although it has added that back in where the previous iteration didn't. Let's add an image in. Let's take a look on the front end to see if this looks any better. Okay, so there's our three slides added in. It does look like it's respecting the height that I've set for it. You will notice that now inside our preview, we do get to see this banner across the bottom, this gradient effect, but it still doesn't run the full width. So I'm sure I could prompt it to get it to do what I want. But let's just click save. Let's check this out in the front end and see if it actually displays. So there we go, it does actually display. If we click through, gives us a nice little transition. And I'm sure we could prompt it to give us different transitions. So what are my thoughts after we've experimented a little bit with Telex? Well, the thing that came to mind for me, first of all, was that WordPress and their AI features are kind of like Microsoft Windows in comparison to the likes of Bolt, Lovable, Webflow, and so on, and the AI tools there. They are more like Apple. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck am I talking about? Well, if you consider Microsoft Windows has to cater for a million different combinations of hardware and software and things like that, there's always the scope for issues. Whereas the likes of Bolt, Lovable, Webflow, and so on, they are more of a closed architecture, and therefore, it's more like the Apple walled garden. In other words, there's less combinations to cause issues. And if you take a look at things like Bolt and Lovable, where they're using their own databases and things, they will be able to control each different facet of that and how the AI interacts with it. Whereas with WordPress, because you can expand it with so many tens of thousands of plugins and extensions and things like that and where we can handle it, and also so many different server setups and things, that I do think there's a the potential there for this to be more problematic. Therefore, becoming more of a pain for people to use. Now, whether they're going to limit this to only working in the .com environment where they do have a little bit more control over things, we'll have to wait and see. If they bring this out to the self-hosted version and you can connect things up via an account inside WordPress and then save and export those files over into your copy of WordPress, I do still think there's the potential for issues there. But only time will tell. And as always, I would love to know what your thoughts are on this. But to wrap things up, what have been my experience of actually using Telex? First of all, it's slow. Secondly, it's inconsistent and it's kind of temperamental, as you saw in my demonstration here. Ask it to do what I would consider to be a relatively basic thing to update the starting block, just adding in some really simple features, crashed the entire thing. Could not get it to load back up, just crashed the browser every single time I tried to access it. The second one, I asked it to do something like adding a Pexels API. It did that, but I told it to do other things. And then when I reloaded it, it didn't include that. And then when I prompted it to do something else, it added that back in, but still ignore the other things that I asked it to do. So right now, I think the bar is very low. I think in comparison to these other tools, I think it's got an awful long way to go. I do think it's got a difficult path ahead of it because of the whole WordPress ecosystem and how many different variations there are going to be out there. 
But like I said, I'd love to know your feedback. Have you tested it? Are you going to test it? Do you think, eh, it's a something and nothing, and you're going to move on and carry on with the rest of your day? Let me know in the comment section down below. And in that description, you've got the link if you want to try this out for yourself. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.